Yeah, let's say it this way because it's more honest. Instead of saying, let's get rid of all these drug addicts and drug, drug dealers and, 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 and once we put, throw away the key on them, we'll, we'll solve this problem. Why don't you try saying it to yourself this way? All these Americans that we don't need anymore, the factories are closed, we don't need them, you know, the textile mills, they're gone, <laughs> GM is closing plants. We don't need these people. They're ex extra Americans. We don't need them. Let's just get rid of the bottom 15% of the country. Let's lock them up. In fact, let's see if we can make money off locking them up in the short term. Even though it's going to be an incredible burden for our society, even though it's going to destroy these families, you know, where these people are, are probably integral to the lives of other Americans, let's just get rid of them. You know, I mean, if, at that point, why don't you just say kill the poor? If we kill the poor, we're going to be a lot better off. Because that's what the drug war has become. My father was a war crimes investigator in Europe after World War II. And we often talked about his experiences. I was reading the work of Raoul Hilberg, who wrote about the destruction of European Jews and the Holocaust. We've long known that the process of destruction was an undertaking step by step. I realized that there was a chain of destruction, that what he was talking about could be expressed by links in a chain around the world in more than one society. People do the same things again and again, decade after decade, century after century. Now this chain of destruction begins with the phase we can call identification, in which the group of people is identified as a cause for problems in society. People start to perceive their fellow citizens as bad, they're evil. They used to be worthwhile people, but now all of a sudden, for some reason, their lives are worthless. The second link in the chain of destruction is ostracism, by which we learn how to hate these people, and how to take their jobs away, how to make it harder for them to survive. People lose their place to live. Often they're forced into ghettos where they're physically isolated, separate from the rest of society. The third link is confiscation. People lose their rights, civil liberties. The laws themselves change, so it's made easier for people to be stopped on the street, patted down, searched, and for their property to be confiscated. Now, once you start taking people's property away, you can start taking the people themselves away. And the fourth link is concentration. Concentrate them into facilities such as prisons, camps. People lose their rights. They can't vote anymore, have children anymore. Often their labor is exploited in a very systematic form. And the final link in the chain of destruction is annihilation. Now this might be indirect by say withholding medical care, or withholding food, preventing further births. Or it might be direct where death is inflicted or people are deliberately killed. These steps tend to happen of their own momentum without anybody forcing them to happen. I think a lot of people would be disturbed and outraged by the thought that any part of this process could be going on in America. But it wasn't until I began studying the drug war that I realized that some of these same steps were happening. For instance, identification. All of us agree that the gravest domestic threat facing our nation today is drugs. The way to take a problem and make it a huge problem is first you ask the wrong question, and then you feed us the wrong answer. Who's responsible? Let me tell you straight out. Everyone who uses drugs, everyone who sells drugs, and everyone who looks the other way. You identify people, their characteristics. You make them other using fear-mongering as if they're the cause of our problems. These people are killing our kids. These people are disrupting society. These people are wrecking our society. Secondly, ostracism. Society learns to hate drug users. If you're a casual drug user, you're an accomplice to murder. You apply special laws to them that don't apply to others. Now, all of a sudden, these people who've previously just been identified as drug users become criminals. If you break the law, you no longer have a home in public housing. The ultimate effect is isolation, being cut off from mainstream society. 
We started out, we identify them, we figure out who they are, then we start making laws to prevent them from being around our children. You push them out of the places where they may be successful, and so where do they go? The area of the least opposition, the modern American ghetto. And we managed to isolate the poor economically. You force them out of the place where they could live and work and possibly be successful, and now you make them, you make them criminals. So once the economics has done its business, then you can have different levels of policing. You can you can change the rules. You're under arrest. What? You got a bench warrant, probably for drugs. Hey guys, you know the program. Get the hands up, turn around. Confiscation. Any property they find on you can be subjected to civil forfeiture. The money's ours now. That's my money now. Federal and local police seize these vehicles after their occupants allegedly purchased cocaine and other drugs. If we're seizing their property, it's really a simple next step to start seizing their persons. Holloway was arrested on charges of resisting arrest and wandering with the intent to buy drugs. In the drug war, there's more that's being confiscated. Okay? What's being taken from them is all hope in a future. What y'all getting them for? Don't warrant we told you with more narcotics. With the drug war, we've gone as far as the concentration phase. My government says we're fighting a heroic war against drugs and the war against people who use drugs. And frankly, a lot of them are just going to have to be locked up. Extraordinary numbers of people are in prison because of drugs, yet it is not a place to get drug treatment. They come out, and then we're surprised that we have the highest recidivism rates. And that results in this cycle of incarceration and overcrowding. This concentration of people whether it's in inner city ghettos or in prisons, creates a culture of hopelessness that is incredibly corrosive. When they don't have any prospects, people turn to drugs. And then we'll pursue them, and we'll be able to hire a bunch of prison guards and parole officers and narcotics detectives and drug treatment people. In the short term, uh, some people have jobs. Annihilation. That's not happening with the drug war in this country. But there are subtle but real ways that don't involve indiscriminate mass killings, such as preventing births. $200 cash payments to women addicted to crack to be sterilized. Violence in prisons. Severe overcrowding sparked jailhouse riots. 27 inmates died yesterday. People swept up in drug war violence. 140 drug killings this year. An Iraqi war veteran was killed after SWAT team officers stormed his Tucson, Arizona home in a drug raid that turned up no drugs. Now, it's important to remember or to realize it isn't that the war on drug users is the same as what happened in other societies, but that both are wars on ordinary people, people who are just like us. You've got to have an enemy for everything. The way that uh, Germany in the 30s rebuilt their infrastructure, rebuilt their their industries and rebuilt their pride, their nationalism, was by saying that these people, this group of people, is the cause of all of our woe, and if we hate them, we'll be better off.